So DFW was originally a concept that came together from the cities of Dallas and Fort Worth. And it was built and started operations in 1974. We are one of the busiest airports in the world. We have seven runways, 24 hour operations for takeoffs and landings. DFW has an infrastructure that is comprised of 133 landside bridges, 12 airside bridges, and 1,288 lane miles of road. That's the distance between DFW Metroplex and San Diego, California. DFW has service to 260 destinations from 26 scheduled airlines and is the second largest airport by land area in the United States. DFW sits on 17,000 acres. That's larger than the island in Manhattan. We knew they had an issue with an old terminal that had been here for 30 years. So we met with DFW, you know, numerous times just to hear them out on their problem case. The high sea gates were gates that were built as temporary gates for nine months. But it was supposed to be there just for a little bit to kind of help with capacity and it stayed there for decades. Those gates lasted 30 plus years. The reason being is because they became so pivotal to the hubbing operation of American Airlines. The time had come in December of 2019 to demo them because from a safety perspective, they were no longer conducive to all the applicable codes. It is akin to an open heart surgery by taking out five gates that are the heart of the hubbing operation. So we have a long history of working with DFW and we knew uh, from talking to them that they were really interested in doing prefab construction. Prior to the Terminal C High Sea Gates project, the Walsh Group had begun an in-house study and initiative to develop an accelerated concourse delivery system that leveraged our large-scale accelerated bridge construction technology. The High Sea Terminal locations is constrained on four sides. A unitized approach empowered us to work around these limitations efficiently and safely while maintaining the highest levels of quality. The overall design is made of six major prefabricated modules built at an off-site location and three sections of conventional stick-built construction where the existing terminal building connects to the modules at the center where the concourse turns as well as at the end. They are clad off-site and finished with metal panels, glass curtain wall, roofing, and concrete slabs before they are transported on self-propelled modular transporters or SPMTs approximately a mile and a half across the active taxiway and runway, including two 90-degree turns, and then under the Skylink to the actual building site. Once the modules arrive at the building site, they need to be jacked up eight feet into place, and then the final support columns are poured. When complete, the modules form an 80,000 square foot new concourse. So one of the biggest challenges for the Walsh Group in terms of transporting the modules across the airfield was that there were no best practices for us to reference. There was no guidebook. So we had to create our own. We spent a lot of time with our partners, PGAL and the engineers, going through calculus before we turned in the RFP that said, yes, this can be done. You know, we told the owner that doing it modularly would save time. Now we have to prove it. We had a height restriction, we had a width restriction. That was a big challenge, and then trying to figure out how we were going to connect them structurally. We had to coordinate with the Skylink as well to make sure that they were okay with our processes because we were working within only several inches of the Skylink structure above us. Building it on foundations four foot above ground, you know, it produced a safety aspect for our guys that they weren't working in the air. We must have measured this thing countless of times just to make sure that everything lined up from the curtain wall to the steel. Coming to work for Walsh Construction, I thought I had seen everything, you know, but I had never seen an airport terminal built modularly.
project at DFW tonight is a first of its kind. We're gonna move these modules across the airfield and put them into place and save months on the construction schedule. Convoy is clear and ready to roll. Stage fright for everyone. I remember calling on my phone to Dan Walsh back in Chicago and said, well, this is either gonna be a huge success tonight or we're gonna look really bad in the paper tomorrow. Airport got dark and the runway shut down and everyone got behind the modules, Cled. You were there, I was there, our friends were there, and we walked behind them as they moved one and a half miles from where they were built to where they were gonna sit. It was an awesome night. Are we gonna damage the airfield with moving 300 tons across the airport? All these things were thought through. I see this 85 by 85 monstrosity across the runway. Everything was going great. We got to the sky lane. I looked over at Khaled, he looked over at me, we looked over at Thomas. I said, this is gonna fit, right? We had inches to spare underneath the air train. Five inches to be exact. And shook their head, and there it went. It snuck right under it like a limbo stick. We knew with all the engineering and all the studying and everything we had done that this job would be a success. There was no issues. Windows lined up perfectly. There was no warping. The last module went so fast because at that point, the welders knew exactly what to do. When we moved the modules, it was exactly as planned, six times. That's a testament to PGAL, Henderson Rogers, and of course, my team here. We made it all happen. As the mover jacked down, the final welds were being made. We shook our hands and we thanked all our workers everyone who had made this possible. I remember texting Khaled and saying, we did it. We made history. when you get into that terminal, you would never ever in a million years know that it was built off-site, it was transported across an airport, and then stitched together. We can apply the modular construction method to any type of construction. We can use this for healthcare, we can use this for commercial high-rise, we can use this for multi-use. Really any type of building construction can be turned over with unitized modular construction methods. It's been an incredibly innovative project with world-class engineering and construction. This is the model of what the future terminals will look like, not just at DFW, but across the entire globe.